Okay, continuing our tour of the phylogeny, we've moved on to mammals now, and we'll look at about a third of them here. First, think about where we are. We have amphibians and amniotes. Within amniotes, we had the reptiles and birds, and descended from diapsids and perhaps anapsids in the case of turtles. And then we had synapsids, which are the um, group that evolves into mammals. Within mammals, we have a basal group here called monotremes. So there's only three species of these still alive the platypus, and two different species of echidna. These are mammals that actually lay eggs. So a synapomorphy for the rest of the mammals is live birth, and then there's two major groups here. Marsupials, which give birth to very, very small offspring, so kangaroos, wombats, and koalas. And then eutherians, who via a true placenta are able to develop larger offspring inside of them and give birth to larger offspring that then drink milk from true mammary glands. And this is placental mammals, and that's where humans are. So in this video, let's look at these orders of mammals, so cetaceans through insectivores, this monophyletic group. If we were to go back to this ancestor here, this is a monophyletic group of all the descendants from whatever this thing is here. It would be hard to imagine what it is, because its descendants include whales, lions, and insectivores, or hedgehogs. So this thing here, the ancestor of all these taxa, who knows what that looked like. All right, our first group are cetaceans. So this is whales and dolphins. There are two major groups of cetaceans. So mysticeti, which are whales that have two blowholes. Most of them are very large. These are the ones who are filter feeders. They don't have teeth. Instead, they have sheets of baleen. Baleen is made from keratin, like your fingernails. Um, so this is a kind of representative skeleton here. You can see the very large mouth where the baleen will be hanging. These guys are interesting in that they have, they don't have hind limbs, but they have the leftover bones inside of their body from where their ancestors did have high limbs. The second major group of whales are odont cetans. Um, they have one blowhole. Most of them are a lot smaller, so this is like dolphins and porpoises. They have teeth made from enamel, they don't have the baleen, and they tend to hunt larger prey. And you can see that they, in fact, have completely lost the remains of the hind limbs from their ancestors. So mysticetes are like your humpback whales and your blue whales and your right whales, and odontocetes are more like dolphins and porpoises and that sort of thing. The closest relatives of cetaceans are artiodactyls. So artiodactyls includes pigs, deer, goats, hippos, camels. They're ungulates and all the ones with even toes, so hoofed animals with an even number of toes. Essentially, when you think about something with hooves, as long as you're not thinking about a horse, a rhino, or a tapir, you're thinking about an artiodactyl. So that includes bison, yaks, gazelles, boars and pigs, giraffes, and hippos. Hippos, in fact, seem to be the closest relatives of whales, which is not entirely a surprise, because hippos are big and fat and live in the water like whales do. It's kind of interesting that artiodactyls, they're more closely related to whales than they are to perissodactyls, which are the horses and rhinos, which you might have thought would be closer relatives, right? Because these guys are kind of like horses. Deer are a lot like horses. But that's not actually the way the history of life went. So this is what peristodactyls look like. So this is horses, tapirs, and rhinos. So here are rhinos. Rhinos have the cutest babies. Horses and zebras and those sorts of things look like this. And then this is a tapir. This, if you've seen the movie Apocalypto, this is the thing he kills at the beginning of that movie. Other than that, they don't really get a lot of press or movie time. So these are ungulates, odd-toed, right? So like horses have one hoof, right? And rhinos have three. So this is the other group of ungulates, in addition to artiodactyls, that would actually be a paraphyletic group if we termed that as a group, because we would not want to include um, whales. So now carnivores. Carnivores include dogs, cats, bears, raccoons, weasels, hyenas, seals, walruses, uh, the meat-eating sorts of organisms. So although pandas don't eat meat, they're bears, so they're within carnivora, so you can see it eating here. Here's a picture you don't often see of a panda. This is, they, they do handstands so they can mark their trees as high up as they can get. This is the wolverine from the movies, but there's a real animal wolverine here that's um, just as fierce. And then carnivores include lions and other felines. And they also include a group that evolved to go back into the water. So seals and walruses and sea lions are carnivores that evolved back into the water. 
I've heard them described as dog mermaids, which is kind of what they are, if you think about it in that, that particular way. Next we have foliodota, or pangolins. So this is a really interesting group of mammals, because you can see they don't really have what looks like fur. They have these scales on their body. They're actually kind of anteatery by disposition. They use these claws to rip open termite mounds and ant nests and eat the ants. And they spend a lot of their time curled up. So my parents back in blur days had a pet pangolin when they lived in Africa. They said it was the most boring pet ever. It spent all of its time curled up and only ever uncurled itself at night. Unfortunately, more recently, pangolins, because they're such an unusual looking mammal, they've actually become a target of the illicit trade in animal parts and they're actually really in danger of extinction due to overhunting just because they look really interesting. There is in fact a campaign being mounted to try to get Disney to make a pangolin movie so that people will actually care about them before they're driven to extinction. Our second last group here are chiropterans or bats. So these guys have evolved the ability to fly like birds, but their wings are actually quite different in structure from birds. Many of them are predatory eating a mouse, eating a frog, and this is, uh, vampires are kind of like parasites, right? And then uh, sometimes they're just super cute. Uh, there's a very large number of bat species as well. And then insectivores uh, include shrews and hedgehogs and moles. They kind of look like rodents, but they are not rodents. That is a different order of mammals. So hedgehogs are very popular in England. Uh, Selenodons in Madagascar, you can see this water shrew killing itself some prey here. These guys have a very, very fast metabolism, so must be eating constantly in order to stay alive. 